It's great to welcome back to the program Ralph Nader, who is a political activist, consumer advocate, former presidential candidate, and also author most recently of the book, How the Rats Reformed the Congress. You can uh, get the book and find out much more about it at ratsreformcongress.org. It's so great to have you back on. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's Rats Reform Congress. Yes. Um, So let's talk a little bit about the idea behind the book and and how it relates to real-world activism, because just to give you some context, I have been talking for a long time on my program about calling your elected officials is great, signing petitions on the internet. I don't know really how much it does, but it's a show of support. But that at a certain point, there may need to be something closer to a real revolt by the population if we are to change some of the systemic problems that exist with our system of government and our country. Uh, c- can you talk about the, that idea of a revolt and sort of how you tell that story in the book? Sure. Uh, basically, uh, it, it uh, starts out with a rat infestation in, on Capitol Hill. Uh, there is actually a rat infestation uh, throughout Washington, D.C. And the rats do what rats do. They go for water and food. They don't have any anthropomorphic quality like Mickey Mouse. And they find that uh, one of the best venues is to go up the pipes into the toilet bowls of the members of Congress. And you can imagine the horror on discovering this by the Speaker of the House and the Minority Leader of the House. And uh, they they try to cover it up while they try to deal with the rat infestation scurrying all over the offices. And uh, a reporter exposes it. And then all the press goes wild, uh, making jokes of it, making rat jokes, making jokes of the politician, late-night comedy, TV. Uh, derision uh, spreads all over uh, the country, and people start uh, paying some attention uh, to the Congress. And some active groups and uh, people who weren't active said, hey, let's take advantage of this. While well, people are uh, looking at, uh, at the Congress and the spectacle, uh, on national TV and social media, let's mobilize the people. And the rest of the book, after making you laugh yourself seriously, is how Congress rat watcher groups, they're really Congress watchdog groups, uh, can be easily formed in every congressional district, and how mass rallies around Capitol Hill that go on for hours with bullhorns uh, demanding the resignation of the corporate uh, lawmakers and uh, starting to get defectors from uh, the 535 men and women who have so much of our power, uh, and some of them defect and join the crowd. In the meantime, uh, a very representative group of really serious citizens, uh, run by a former stonemason, is developing the agenda and the congressional hearings, and they learn that the faster reform is proposed, Uh, instead of being drawn out, uh, the quicker each reform helps each other and builds more and more support. So if some people are interested in living wage, but they're not interested in full Medicare for all, uh, they support full Medicare for all and vice versa. And a lot of these changes are long overdue. They have huge polling support, which means liberals and conservatives support, as they do now, uh, full Medicare for all. Uh, living wage, uh, law enforcement against corporate crime, against consumers and workers and the environment and uh, defenseless communities, uh, bad trade agreements, uh, dealing with the enormously bloated uh, corporate welfare budget, which is draining away from uh, investment in repairing America to community level, you know, the usual list, schools, highways, bridges, public transit, uh, sewage, drinking water systems are crumbling. And huge Public works programs will create good-paying jobs that can't be exported to China, and they will improve public services. Now, who is against that? I mean, the Chamber of Commerce locally is for it. The labor unions are for it. Everybody that supports these kinds of renovations and repairs and upgrades. So this book, which is not that long, it, it is uh, funny in places where it, it should be, but in humor there is truth. But it gives you a tremendous level of excitement because again and again, as the people are mobilizing 
and taking back control of, of Congress. After all, they delegated the power to this tiny branch of government that has the most powerful uh, impact because it, it's uh, it, it's uh, empowered by the Constitution to be more powerful than the executive and judicial branch. It has the taxing power, the spending power, the confirmation of nominees to the judiciary uh, power it has a word declaring power has the investigatory power yeah. and so so people are saying let's take back control and every every move and there are a lot of creative moves that people say hey we can do that every move meets one test which is can anybody stop you the people from doing that well can along anybody those stop lines you? i mean let's let me dig into that a little bit so in the if you imagine in the real world uh what would be in your view, a realistic trigger for this sort of level of civil disobedience and revolt that in the book you you sort of fictionalize, but it's very prescient in terms of the real world. And the, the context for me asking that question is part of the problem with the system we have is that with stagnant wages, with it being so easy to get fired because most jobs don't have any kind of contractual or union protection, all of the things that you know and have been talking about, sure. it's a system that's designed to make it really hard for people to say, we are going to execute a sustained period of revolt and civil disobedience and mass gathering. So what, what would be big enough to trigger that? First of all, you've got to have a different attitude. Stop using the words resistance and civil disobedience and start using the word takeover of Congress. Hmm. You have so many people around the country, marches, demonstrations on climate disruption, on bigotry, uh, on civil rights, uh, etc. And they lose all this energy that goes into the ether on a weekend when hmm. the demonstrations occur. And it isn't refocused on your two senators and representative, where you summon them to your own people's town meetings and place the agenda of legislation uh, and repeal of bad laws on their table. You see, they come to listen uh, to, and they look over the crowd in the auditorium and they say, hey, she says, just conservatives here, the liberals here. How do I game this one? Uh, this is going to be rather difficult. And so what this book uh, starts out with are the long overdue improvements in livelihoods. Uh, that people in Western Europe and Canada have had for decades. So it starts out with the living wage. You have 45 million workers in this country make less than 15 bucks an hour before deductions. You can't live on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that's that's a big mobilizer uh, for this book. In this book, the second is uh, full Medicare for all. Well. You know, the progressives, even the progressives, they don't know how to argue this. They, they argue it in terms of fairness, in terms of health care. They don't say 35,000 people die every year because they can't afford health insurance to get diagnosed and treated in time. They don't say that the system is so corrupt that, according to the leading experts in the field, uh, $350 billion every year goes down the drain in computerized billing fraud and abuse in the health care area. That's $350 billion with a B. So all these uh, elaborations show people how to argue their case much better. And then, of course, there's a double standard of justice. You don't think the guy in the bar knows that? One, one standard for people and a double standard for corporations and corporate executives who get off. They don't get criminally prosecuted uh, for preventable deaths and injuries and the workplace and the environment and hospital malpractice, etc. And so that's another very popular one. Law and order, crime in the suites has to be addressed. The fourth one is how come uh, these big corporations uh, are on the, uh, the dole? Why, why are they subsidized by your tax dollars? Right. Those tax dollars should be brought back to you in terms of jobs, repairing public services in your community, as I noted earlier. The same thing with the tax system. You have student debt now is $1.5 trillion. I mean, what kind of society launches its young generation in a sea of debt? You tell me, what kind of society? No country in Western Europe uh, does that. Uh, you have tuition-free education in most of these uh, countries for, for college or, or university. And so, well, how do you get rid of student debt? 
Well, you know, we bailed out Wall Street debt, mm -hmm. trillions of dollars in 2008. Uh, I say we because nobody asked the taxpayer. It was forced down their throat uh, by the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Bush and Obama administration, Citigroup, Bank of America, all these crooks. Uh, they were bailed out. So why, why not have a jubilee for student debt? Well, yeah. who's going to pay for that? It's simple. You have a Wall Street speculation tax. Hey, Americans, don't you go into stores and pay 6 7 8% sales tax on things you need to buy? Yeah. Well, how come there's no sales tax if today someone buys $100 million of Exxon bonds or Exxon derivatives? Uh, how about a sales tax of, a, say, a half a percent? That's pretty small. That's $300 billion, Mr. Packard. So it's all these things that really rile people's sense of unfairness and the double standard and corporations being our masters instead of being our servants, and we the people and the sovereignty of the people, uh, making sure that they delegate their power with strings attached to Congress. And if you take control of Congress, the ball game starts to be over. And that's what most progressives don't understand, that like the, the Occupy Wall Street, uh, you know, they trespassed and they got a lot of press because yeah. they took over Zuccotti Park, right? Yeah. And other places around the country. But they didn't have an issue. So I had a conference call with 300 of them. And I said, here's your issue. It's a living wage. And they said, of course. I said, well, why don't you uh, occupy uh, the, the space around all your congressional uh, representatives? You got all the people ready to go. And they said, well, we can't organize anything. In other words, they blew this huge opportunity in 2011 yeah. with mass media focus day after day, and they didn't focus on the one institution that can make it happen. And that's why it's got to be, it's the Congress people. It's the Congress people. They've got to get that drilled in their head. There are only 535 of them, and on many issues, you've got about 150 on your side from the get-go. And the one thing every member of Congress wants more than corporate campaign contributions is your vote. But if your vote is an uninformed vote, a stay-at-home vote, a non-focused around agenda reform vote, your vote doesn't mean much. This is what this rap book is all about. People are ordering five copies at a time, Mr. Packard, because I think they're discussing it in their living room. If they go to ratsreformcongress.org, they can not only get the book, but they can access free a tutorial about how to set up these Congress watchdog groups. Right. And it's no big deal, and nobody can stop you from doing it. And it's a lot easier than you think, and it takes less than 1% of the people to turn Congress around on issue after issue, as long as they are supported by majority opinion. The book is fantastic. It's called How the Rats Reformed the Congress. We've been speaking with the book's author and very, very longtime activist, Ralph Nader. Uh, Ralph, thank you, as always, for being on the program. Well, thank you for intelligent programming, and I think your uh, listeners would love the cover. It was by Mr. Fish, who's a great cartoonist out of Philadelphia. It's a spectacular cover, and on the back are your arguing points on the critique of Congress and what has to be done the most concise critique of Congress ever put on one page.